Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkle. She's sitting the next couple of videos out, but she'll be back uh, hopefully later tonight or tomorrow. We're going to talk about the live action Cowboy Bebop on Netflix because for some reason we're still talking about it. I had this tweet sent to me by Lakta. Uh, CBR is still shilling for the live action Cowboy Bebop series. They're out of ideas on making comic book articles. I, I don't think the comic book articles bring traffic. That's why CBR is, is talking about this kind of stuff. I think they're probably looking at uh, you know, what, what search terms are landing traffic. And for some reason, people are still looking up information on live action Cowboy Bebop, which is a cautionary tale on what not to do. Okay, so well, that being said, look, it wasn't all terrible. It wasn't completely terrible, but it was mostly terrible. I actually thought... Um, uh, the guys who played Jet and Spike were pretty decent. Uh, did not like, was it Danielle Panita who played uh, Faye? I didn't like what they did with Faye. Uh, and I sure as hell did not like Edward. Uh, Edward was awful. Ed was awful. And thank God we don't have to sit through a, a second season. All Ed all the time. So we're going to talk about Cowboy Bebop and its uh, sudden cancellation. And we'll talk about uh, the media kind of still shilling for it, but John Cho was surprised. He was surprised. It was canceled. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, I kind of was too, but you know, we, we heard it from the horse's mouth. We heard it from a Netflix executive that the reason the show was canceled was it cost too much and the viewership dropped off a cliff after the first couple episodes. It couldn't have anything to do with all the changes they made to the show. It couldn't have anything to do with all the uh, negativity. The negative PR couldn't have anything to do with the uh, actress of Faye going out there and attacking the fans. Absolutely nothing to do with that, I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, people were just tuning out because they were racists and misogynists and homophobes and all that, that happy horse shit. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 260,000 subs. Uh, thank you so much for the support. We do talk about anime. We talk about the animation industry. We talk about Netflix. We have talked uh, at length about Cowboy Bebop um, or Cowboy Be Gone. And uh, yeah, it was canceled. It was canceled before, what was it, like a couple of weeks after it dropped on Netflix Everybody thought there was going to be a season two. I actually thought they they had the budget for maybe two seasons at least. And yeah, they uh, cut their losses. Now, a lot of it, uh, you know, I think is because of the expense of the show. It is, you know, even though it looks cheap by, uh, you know, comparison with something, you know, like, uh, you know, Battle Angel, Alita Battle Angel, because it's a theatrical release. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, you know, was pretty expensive for a Netflix show and the uh, eyeballs watching it did not justify continuing the story. We don't need a live-action Cowboy Bebop any more than we need a live-action One Piece, but we're going to get it anyway. John Cho was shocked. I, I kind of was, too, because they really doubled, tripled down on this show. I mean, they promoted the hell out of it. Um, you know, the media went into, uh, you know, defense mode uh, for this show, for uh, Daniela Panita. And uh, I, I honestly thought that they would give it another season just to spite fans. But apparently, Netflix is learning at the end of the day, you got to produce content that uh, brings a return on your investment. And Cowboy Bebop was expensive. So uh, coming from Indie Wire, John Cho breaks silence on very shocking Cowboy Bebop cancellation. I was so bummed. I'm sure he was. Put a lot of my life into it, Cho said about the live-action Netflix anime adaptation, which was canceled in December after just one season, like, like two weeks after it was released. Uh, John Cho is letting it all hang out when it comes to Cowboy Bebop. Um, it was canceled uh, abruptly by Netflix less than three weeks after premiering in November. Uh, lead star Cho, who played charismatic criminal leader Spike Spiegel, uh, not his real name according to the reboot, Revealed his reaction over the announcement. He told The Hollywood Reporter, I was uh, very shocked and uh, it was very shocking and I was bummed. While promoting his YA novel, Troublemaker, he added, I was very warmed by the response to the show. I wish I could have contacted everybody and gotten hugs. I'm mystified a little bit about how you can connect with people that you don't know doing your work, but I won't question it. I will value it and treasure it. I'm just really deeply appreciative that anyone would care. It's stunning to me. Uh, the series grabbed 74 mil million viewing hours globally in its first week. But those numbers dropped by 59% in the next week. 
The series also faced mixed critical reviews as the show garnered a disappointing 47% on Metacritic. And that's, at the end of the day, that's what matters. Uh, shooting on the once-anticipated Netflix series developed by Christopher Yost took its toll on the Star Trek and Columbus actor. Uh, Cho tore his ACL while on the set in New Zealand, leading to production shutting down for months. He had to go through physical therapy. Um, yeah, I put a lot of my life into it. And look, I mean, this is, this is, this comes up time and time again. You know, uh, my show got canceled. My book got canceled. My video game got canceled. Uh, there's critical backlash to this thing that I worked so hard on. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. A lot of people work very hard on a lot of things, you know, and I'm not trying to belittle that, but I mean, we, we've seen this with uh, Disney in particular, my wife, you know, she runs a, a Disney blog and she's dealing with cast members, Disney cast members coming after her, uh, angry that she's criticizing the uh, Galactic Star Cruiser because they worked hard on it. And she's like, I, I get that you worked hard on it. It's not really your fault. It, it was a lame ass idea on Disney's part, you know, rebooting Cowboy Bebop, regardless of how hard people worked on it was a bad idea. Making it live action was a bad idea. Changing uh, plot points and characterizations was a bad idea. That being said, until Faye showed up, I actually was like, yeah, this isn't terrible. This isn't completely terrible. It's got kind of a, a Quentin Tarantino vibe to it. It's not bad. And then as soon as uh, Faye showed up and she was completely different, I was like, yeah, screw this. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, he moved to uh, New Zealand. Uh, his family moved to New Zealand. It was a huge event in my life and it was suddenly over. After the December 9th cancellation, more than 145,000 fans signed a petition to bring it back for a second season, but the show's limited fan base wasn't limited. <laughs> limited fan base wasn't enough to convince Netflix to reverse its decision or renew it this stage. Uh, Indie Wire's otherwise negative review of the series called Cho a saving grace for the series. Um, John Cho's an inspired Spike Spiegel. I thought that it said John Cho's an insipid uh, Spike Spiegel. Inspired. No one could ever hope to embody a character drawn to be equal parts Clint Eastwood, Elliot Gould, Bruce Lee. Uh, Cho's breezy and humanizing performance nails the disaffected cool of a death-obsessed bounty hunter in a blue leisure suit. So yeah, don't blame us, John. Don't blame us. We we gave we gave you a good review. Um, hey, we we've been there too. Like we've got people dunking on us for going after uh, Samu Liu in Shang Chi, and we're like, we actually watched the movie. We gave it a good review. You obviously didn't watch our our videos, but uh, doesn't matter. I mean, you're all kind of painted with the same brush, right? Um, but in this case, like, yeah, just because he worked hard on it. I mean, there are shows out there that are absolutely amazing that get canceled. There's just not enough interest. And the market always self-corrects. And Netflix was looking at this thing. They're like, it's crazy expensive. And there's no way in hell we're going to renew it for another season. Thank God, because the kid that plays Ed, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> like, Ed does, not, Ed does not work in live action. I couldn't stand her for 30 seconds. There's no way in hell I could stand him for a freaking whole series. But yeah, what, what kicked this video off actually was a uh, lock taw tagging me in on a uh, Twitter saying that CBR, you know, CBR is going to stand for cowboy bebop. Of course they are. Um, they've done this with the last Jedi. They've done this with the avatar versus Korra. It's whatever is going to get hits, right? It's whatever gets hit. As I understand it, these writers get paid, uh, a base pay per article, and then they get paid uh, per, you know, if they, they go above and beyond in views. And if people are looking for live action Cowboy Bebop, you know, they're going to find this article. So this is uh, coming from CBR. Netflix's Cowboy Bebop crew is a family, but the animes isn't. So they're saying, <laughs> they're saying the live action version is superior because they're a family. Uh, yeah, they weren't, they weren't really that, that much of a family in the anime. Uh, there are a lot of things that changed, but they said one of the, uh, the saving graces, they said a lot of the criticism is deserved one aspect of the show. There's a saving grace is the relationship between the crew of the bebop in the anime. The bebop crew seem more like begrudging partners in it just for the money or because they have nowhere else to go. Their emotions and secrets are kept close to their chests. I'm willing to open up to the ones they live with. When it comes to the live action adaptation, some secrets are kept, uh, but for the most part, there's more of a sense of camaraderie. The Bebop cl uh, crew is closer to a family than just partners in bounty hunting and the Netflix series. It's a dysfunctional family, but a family nonetheless. 
Um, yeah, so it's they're still trying to defend it. And I look, I, I don't disagree. I actually do think that that uh, Jet and and Spike were pretty decent casting choices, but just the whole thing was just poorly conceived. You know, poorly conceived. You don't want to do this. This is one of those shows where it's like if you're going to adapt an anime and make major changes to it, I would I would suggest picking a show that isn't as uh, highly regarded as beloved as Cowboy Bebop. Um, you know, Collider put an article out a couple of weeks ago talking about what anime fans need to finally embrace <laughs> live action adaptations. And uh, what are they saying? They're basically saying that if they're too far from the source material or not close enough to the source material, they're going to, they're going to alienate audiences. Um, you know, Cowboy Bebop didn't manage to capture the intended audience due to subtle mistakes that added up over the course of its episodes, ultimately leading to its demise. <sighs> it's it's just it's not a good idea, guys. So far, the there are only a handful that have been successful, in my opinion. I think uh, Alita is one of them, but again, we're talking a movie versus a series, and they didn't really deviate that far from the source material. I think when you you deviate. Uh, very, very far from the source material, you know, you definitely are going to alienate your your audience. Um, I don't think it was a surprise the show got canceled. I was just surprised it got canceled as quickly as it did, given the promotional push behind it. But I think Netflix is starting to course correct, too. I mean, three years ago, they would have thrown Dave Chappelle under the wheels of the bus to save face. And they're not doing that now because they have to make money. They have to keep subscribers happy. It doesn't matter if Twitter is outraged or not. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.